can let me know if you can hear me and see me okay uh thank you very much for tuning in my name is paul grogan and we're going to be doing a tutorial and playthrough tonight of velocity vanguard which is a physics based uh space board game that can be played for one to four players it has competitive mode uh cooperative mode depending on which mission you're going to play um the publisher uh, has asked me to create this video and they're going to be joining us tonight going to be teaching me and russell how to play the game uh, and this this video is basically to give you an idea uh, of what the game is and how it plays to see if it's something that you'd be interested in um and as i say it is live on kickstarter right now if you are in, if you are interested in it so without further ado let's introduce larry and i'm going to go back to my discord channel and i need to undefin it so hello larry hello how are you how doing are you? this evening very good thanks for having me on well i say this evening you're over you're oh. over the pond aren't you that's right it's 2 p.m here on the <laughs> east coast of the so, us yeah so tell us a bit a little bit about this game how long have you been working on this game so i guess it's been in my head for many many years um first actually as as a video game but um as i started getting to to board games and tabletop gaming i'm like oh this could be a good good idea to work out on a board game um but the challenge was how do i translate the physics component of the video game to um a board game um so we started working on this uh and creating prototypes in april of 2019 okay and we uh did that to demo the game at gen con um the uh, first exposure play play test hall right and, yeah. and tested sort of started testing it there and if you go to board game geek you'll see the you know kind of first images from that that first play test it's changed quite a bit since then um done a lot of testing with with, with people and getting a lot of feedback um, adjusting the mechanics, adjusting the design, um, but yeah, it's been been since 2019 in development, and now we're okay. we're finally live on Kickstarter. Right. Okay. But you, you're saying you, you before 2019, you've had this idea in your head for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things about sci-fi, especially space themed sci-fi uh, entertainment, is um, sometimes how unrealistic the the uh, way mm -hmm. things move in space. It, yeah. Spaceships don't drive like cars uh, if it was a real um, uh, show. So if you look at shows like The Expanse or even you know games as way back as Asteroids, um, yes. they, you have to deal with physics, um, yep. momentum and inertia. So that's what we try to carry through into the board game is um, moving your ship around, not directly, not one hex at a time, but using um, inertia and thrust to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as somebody who's been playing games since the 80s, board games since the 80s, there's been a few space games that I've played before that have tried to replicate this system and they've ended up getting bogged down in overcomplicated charts and paperwork and things like that. But you, you've kind of streamlined it, haven't you? Yeah, we try to make it as streamlined as possible uh, where there's no measurement. Um, it's visual in the sense that you're moving something to match the movement. You don't have to do any math. Uh, maybe there's a few minus one, plus ones here in the game. Yeah. Uh, we, we try to minimize that as well. Uh, but yeah, to make it as easy and visual and intuitive as possible. Okay, cool. Right, now, what we're going to be playing tonight is going to be, a, it's, it's the first scenario. If you get this game, it's going to come with the first scenario that it suggests you play. That's what we're going to be playing tonight. And you said, it's, you said earlier it's split into two parts. And the first part, exactly. we're just going to learn how to move our ships. That's right. Yeah. So the the way the mission starts off, it it, play, it takes place in kind of the flashpoint. Um, the whole mission, the way the missions are put together in the game is they're based upon the timeline of, of events as humanity first uh, colonizes the solar system and then expands into um, the the near galaxy. Yeah. And um, this is a flashpoint moment where um, th there's an alliance of factions that are meeting at the space station, um, represented by that that purple space station on top of okay, the board. Yep or on the bomb site where you are and you need to dock on that space station so your objective right now in this first part of the mission is to dock and it's meant wow. to teach you how to fly so yes okay. it's the first first scenario that you play in the game um and then the next there's a second part that depends on the outcome of the first yeah. part now i know what's going to take place in the second part but i think for the purpose of the video let's keep that secret but there is going to be okay. a second part and we'll and we'll get to that um <clears throat> so it's not just me that's playing tonight. I'm joined by Russell from for Chits and Giggles. Hi, Russell. Hello. Um, I'm 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 new to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> when he says new, he's taking over. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Russell has been doing some videos for me recently. So you, if you are regular viewers of the channel, you'll notice that in the last couple of days, there's actually two videos that have gone online, um, which, which Russell has done. Uh, apparently you're echoing a little bit, Russell. So I'm just going to turn you down a little bit on here. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining me this evening. You've not played this game. I've not played this game. We're now nope. going to find no. out how we play. That's uh, the plan. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. By the way, the board looks beautiful. Um, it does. It's just stunning. <laughs> just th thank you. Actually, I want to put a shout out to Balance Sheet. There, they are. Um, he's doing the all the illustration work, uh, the commanders, the the ship concepts, the board that you see here was uh, all all done by a balance sheet amazing artist mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's certainly uh, certainly quite striking so right okay so um yeah over to you larry then fire Great. away and let's uh let's learn how to play all right so um the game is split up into rounds and the, the number of rounds depends upon the mission in this case it the round all the rounds will end when the objective is attained, meaning docking at the space station or crashing into it, as it so happens. <laughs> um, Let's not do that. And on each round, players will take turns activating one of their ships. Now, again, this is the start of scenario, so you have one ship each. Um, yeah. In other scenarios, you may have more than one, up to three, and okay. you control them independently. So to start off, to, you would. Whoever's first has the first player token, which I think is you, Paul. Um, is that you this? take the first turn. Yeah. Yep. By activating your ship, and the only thing we're going to worry about in the first part of this mission is really navigation. Yeah. And there is a gray token that represents your navigation crew. Um, to take an action on your ship, you simply take that token and put it on one of the actions that are on your ship dashboard. Okay. And right at the top, you'll see the navigation action which has indication on what the capabilities of your ship are. And then there's other actions that you'll see uh, that let you repair, um, re-energize shields, repair a hull, and repair your reactor. Right. Uh, but fortunately, you don't have any damage yet, so all we're going to worry about right now is taking the navigation action. Yep. And the way you do that is you place a token on that slot, and you decide, well, how much thrust am I going to apply for my ship? And you spend energy to apply thrust. So each energy you spend applies more thrust mm -hmm. or applies more rotation. Now, you right now we're, we're working with these battle cruisers, and they have limitations. They can do a maximum of three thrust and a maximum rotation of two. Right. So the maximum energy that you can spend on any given uh, activation of the ship is five. Right. For, for thrust. So yeah. when you apply thrust, you're going to move your your vector token, which is right here, on this velocity board that represents your velocity. And each energy you spend, you move that token in the direction of the token arrow. So if you see there's a little black uh, arrow on the top of it, and yep. right now it's pointing um, towards where you're sitting. This way, yeah. Yeah, that's the same direction that your ship is pointing on the right. board. Right, okay. So there is some alignment here between this velocity board and how mm. the board is set up. Yeah. So you'd spend energy and move that token for as much thrust as you want to apply. So you, why don't you go ahead and do that? And so you can how apply do I thrust. spend my energy? Do I move it to here? Yeah, you can move it up above the board here. Okay. <clears throat> so if kind I was to spend area. three energy for thrust, I can move this counter to here. Exactly. Okay. So what can happens I... there is it... Go ahead. Can I, can I only do that? I can't, I can't move it to here or could I move it to here? No, correct. You only can move it in the direction that the arrow is pointing. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're applying. The theory is you're applying thrust, and yeah. because you're facing that way, that's where your ship's going to go. Right. You know, you can't apply it in multiple different ways, but you can now turn if you like by spending energy on a rotation, right. and that would rotate your ship one. Okay. So if I spend an energy on rotating, and then I decide I'm going to rotate like that. Yeah. So now you've spent the energy. That mm -hmm. token represents where your ship will be in the future, right? Yeah. So if the V on this velocity board represents where your ship is now, yeah. that token represents where your ship will be in the future. Yeah. 
And after you've taken that action and you're satisfied with your navigation, you would place this uh, velocity helper on the board. If you look near your ship, yep. um, the tabletop simulator has done it for you um, nice. just to keep the game moving online. But normally you would place that there yourself so right. that you yep. know where you're going to go and where you've been. And also it gives an indication to the other players of where you're going to be in the next turn. You can always okay. change that uh, by applying thrust in different ways, but it gives everyone indication of where players will be in the future. Yeah. So, so let's just ask a quick question you... on movement. And obviously sure. bearing in mind, this is where I'm going to end up and this is where I'm facing. I wouldn't do this, but is it possible to spend, let's just put this back. Is it possible to spend two thrust, uh, sorry, spend two energy to apply thrust, then spend one to rotate, then spend another one to thrust again? No, on one action you can, is with the battle cruisers, you can spend an action to do thrust from the rear engines first. Yeah. And then apply uh, one of the port thrusters to rotate, for right. example. So it's thrust um, and but then you rotate. Can't, you can't mix and match. You can't mix and match, and you have to do it in that order for the battle cruiser. Yeah. For the smaller ships that are more maneuverable, uh, okay. for example, the small scout, you can, you, can, you can mix and match one way or the other. You just can't do turn thrust turn yeah gotcha okay so that would be my choice of action for the turn okay yeah that's great and one thing to note um about that vector token is that that doesn't go back to the middle automatically Ooh. the only way it gets back there is by you moving it back by applying thrust this is the uh. physics bit yeah so that will stay there so you know be aware of that as you're moving your ship <laughs> that unless you change things you're going to continue to go I can already direction. see where this is going then. So I think in that yeah. case, I think I'm actually going to apply another one because I've been doing my physics lessons and I'm going to apply that one there. Okay. I think. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's good enough. All right. So now that you've done taking the action and let's just skip through any other action because there's nothing available right now. Mm -hmm. What you'll do is you'll move your ship. So now you picked an interesting ship that has a center of gravity that's towards the back. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. So you'll move the ship so that your center of gravity is on that um, yeah. the future hex and then rotate it to a line. There you go. Perfect. Okay. And I'm then this what, you would, what you would do there <laughs> is flip your uh, ship activation token, which is right above there. Yep. This lets everyone know you've taken your turn with that ship, and then the yep. next player would go with their activation. Okay. If I had multiple ships, would I take an action with each of my ships right now, or would it be one ship at a time? It's one ship at a time, unless you have a command ability that allows you to do so. Okay, right. Um, there's, for the larger ships that hold commanders, I let you take uh, two activations in one turn. Gotcha. Right. So I assume it is now over to Russell. It is. Okay. All right. Well... <laughs> I'm going to take it a little bit easier, um, at least I hope I am, and I'm going to spend two crystals. Oh, sorry, for the wrong thing. These two crystals, and where do they go? Just on the side? Just, yeah. So Usually they put them right side. above, yeah. Sure. Uh, and to move it two spaces along, and then I'm going to spend one energy. Am, am I going to get... Um, Am I going to lose this energy? How, how do you... Yeah, again... great question. So um, at the beginning of the next round, your reactor will regenerate energy um, up to the number of reactor cubes that you have. So this, each one has five. And to the maximum of the capacitor. So the capacitor has a limit of five as well. So awesome. you'll get energy to fill that capacitor again up to the maximum of five. So I'm, so I'm silly not... Well... I think I'm okay. I think I'm just going to play it like this yep. um, and just see what happens because I just don't know 100% exactly what's going to come up next. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to play it safe. It's also good that you've done something different to me so that we yeah. see how this plays out. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think that's, that's it. That's all I'm doing on my turn. Okay. Well, you do have to move your ship. So before you... Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you also have to rotate in the middle. I see. So his, Paul's ship is different because his center of gravity is at the back, but mine yeah. is... I gotcha. Okay, so I think that's right. And then mm -hmm. that... There you go. We good? Perfect. Perfect. Cool. All right, so that is the end of the round. Um, yeah. What would happen now is the first player token would move to the player to 
the right mm -hmm. and you would regenerate energy. So I regenerate uh, one energy per again. reactor cube up to a maximum of exactly. five. So exactly. Yep. There we go. And then now Russ can take his turn. Yeah. Okay. So so now based on this, my my ship's gonna end up there unless I do something different, right? Yeah. So if you don't spend any energy, that's where you will end up. Oh, okay. Um, where are we? I'm assuming we want to go on this purple ship at the bottom, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's where you want to dock. So docking is you want to be adjacent to any hex of the space station with any hex of your ship and be within zero velocity. So your velocity, on, on the, if you look at your velocity board, each ring represents one level of velocity. So as long as you're, you're within middle or within the first circle of velocity and you're adjacent to the space station at the end of your turn, um, that's a successful dock. Okay. 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 So interesting. Uh, all right. So I will, um, I think I can pick up speed a little bit, um, but I do need to sort of get <laughs> a little bit. Um, so if I wanted to move in this direction, uh, I'm just going to pick up the token, but if I wanted to move here, am I allowed? Oh, no, I'm not allowed to because no. I need to go in the direction of the arrow. You can only move, you can only thrust in that direction at the moment. Yeah. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one energy to go here. It's a little bit further. And then uh, I'm going to... Well, let's do another one. <laughs> let's do another one. Why so not? It's two energy. Sorry? It's called velocity for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll spend two. Yeah. Okay. And then I think I'm going to um, rotate it one again. Okay. Um, and then that's going to cost me one energy. And then I think I'm done then. Oh, no, I need to move my ship. Yep. Got it. So I think it was that, right? It was, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah then right. that's the end of my turn. And now you have to rotate it to be aligned with that your token as well. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, there we go. Right. So if I don't do anything, I'm going to end up there facing that way. And then if I don't do anything again, I'll end up there facing that way. So I think I'm going to apply one. <laughs> uh, maybe two. Getting a bit close to that asteroid, isn't it? Yeah, you'd be overlapping with that, so that would be a collision. Oh, I would, yes. So that, that, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> now, we won't go into the rules for collision, because I'll, I'll try and avoid it. So that's going to go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. That's all I can actually do. I don't want to go any further forward. Um, yeah. And then I'll end up there, facing that way. And then I, th I think, actually... I'm going to rotate like that. Okay, so I've done that. I've only Perfect, spent two yeah. energy. Um, so, yeah, so here's the question. If... Yeah, let's good ju let's point, ju yeah. Let's just, just go that. back. If I do spend another energy mm -hmm. to go to here and then rotate, am I okay? You are good. Right, okay. Um, because so, it, it, it's, it only matters where you end up um, right at the end of the turn not where you are on each piece yes. of movement um okay. does that does that mean you you can fly through asteroids as long as you end up on the other side of it um no so okay. you can't fly through them because if the shortest path takes you through an object that would be a, a okay but since his rotation there is no like instant uh contact mm -hmm. he's flying past it as long as the center of gravity and the ship's hexes don't overlap an object, it's no collision. Yeah, okay. there we go. Right, so that's me done. And then we right. go to round three. That's right. First player token moves over to Paul. That's and then me. you go ahead, Paul. And then it's my go. So again, if I don't do anything, I'm going to end up there. So... And we need to end up next to the station with a speed of one or zero. Exactly. So one, two, three. So if I go to four, then I'll be four. Then one, two. 
So you, yeah, the way you slow down is by turning round. You can't apply negative thrust. No. So yeah, the the, the bow cruisers have you know one big main engine and and tiny uh, other smaller engines to help maneuver. Um, but yeah. you can't apply um, you know large thrust in the other way. So you do have to turn around to slow down. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I'm gonna go just one forward. Um. No, let let let's do two. Let's do two and see what happens. And then I will rotate. So that's going to put me there. And then next time we'll put me. Yeah, OK, I think. I think that's good. Yeah, I'm okay Great. with that. <laughs> there you go, done. Oh, man. That's so, very good. Um, Larry, this this vector board here only goes up to five so i can't it go does. beyond that no you can't apply thrust beyond five right okay gotcha okay so uh my turn right yep yep all right so uh <laughs> so actually i just need to plop uh, okay i just needed to see it interesting yeah, normally in the physical game, your tokens would be on the board. They wouldn't disappear like they are now. So it's yeah, like yeah. We'll address in TPS. So you'd work out where it starts from and then adjust from there pretty yeah. much. Um, okay, so I think um, I think I do need to start making some headway here. So I think I'm just going to do the... I don't want to do it too fast. <laughs> I'm a bit worried <laughs> I'm going to crash into that ship. But um, yeah, I think I'm just... Yeah, what the heck, I'm going to go one more. I think I'm Good safe choice. to do. I think I'm safe to do that. Uh, so I'll do two cubes, two energy for that, and then I don't think I will revert and um, change the direction. I think I'm happy mm -hmm. with it where it is. So um, yeah, I'll just move my ship from that then, I guess. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Yep. Plop it right there. We've both Flip ended my ship up on the same. Over. I'm done. And it's you again. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> again, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it being there um, at the moment, um, but I am going to have to make some course correction. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that I'm going to just rotate it, um, and I'm going to rotate it twice. I think, mm -hmm. and <laughs> that will be my turn. I think. I'm going to use got the, the two same, energy. Uh, the same idea. Yeah. So I'm just going to flip that over for um, just. Oh, wait, hang on. I need to put my ship down first. So I need sorry, to rotate sorry. this twice. And then it goes here. And then I'm done. There you go. Okay. I'm done. So Sweet. I think I will apply one bit of thrust to go here. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that I think that works. And then I apply another two. Go there. And then this ends up here. Very okay. good. Yeah, we've we've both ended up roughly roughly this about the same. Yeah, wow. Okay, end Very of the good. round. So me first. And at this point, I'm going to generate uh, certainly one thrust in that direction. <clears throat> Probably two. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's probably it. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm just going to do that. So I end up there. And if I've got this right, I dock next turn. Oh, uh, I think you're in about the same position, aren't you, Russ? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm one turn after that before I'll dock. Because I have to slow down, and that's going to move affect how close my ship gets in, in yeah. the first place. So I think I'm two turns away. Yeah, same as me. I mean, as, if I go close to the ship this turn but then i'm able to sort of like pull it almost 
dead stop, that would still count, right? Um, no, it's still two turns. It's still two turns. Because after the ship moves at the end of your turn, it classifies where it's, when it's docked, right? So at the end of the movement, in and it, it would be the end of the movement and where your velocity, where your vector yeah. token is on the velocity board. Yeah. Cool. All right, cool. Yeah, I think um, possibly one, <laughs> two turns away from it. Um, is it my turn, by the way? It is, yeah. Okay, so, um, so I think I put my token, energy tokens back. Um, I think that based on where I am right now, it's a bit close. Oh, wait, that shouldn't be, that, that should be like that. Um, so I think I might actually just bump it up um, just by one. And then I think, oh, no, I think I need to keep it there, don't I? No. Oh, yeah, and that's right. And then, no, I think that's right. So I think if I keep it as it is, I'm going to end up, oh, no, because I, I forgot about the back of my ship as well. <laughs> so I think if I do that, I think I'll be okay. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to spend the one energy cube for that, uh, not cube, token, um, for that. And I think that's all I'm going to do. Okay. I think I need to then go my next turn then. Yeah. So, uh, that stays there and then I think I'm done. Next so, round is you'll go I, first. Okay. Well, in this case, I think everybody knows, everyone knows what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm going to just spend two tokens to push it like this and then call it the end of my turn. And is that, is that correct? You have successfully docked. Congratulations. Ooh. And I oh, do the same. Yes. I think the chat didn't have faith in me. Uh, up until <laughs> <very late>. uh, <laughs> that was impressive flying. Um, there you go. But Russ did win the round. <clears throat> oh, did he? Oh, yeah, he, he, he <laughs> I mean, got first. Well, we both docked. There, there was no on way. The that, yeah. Good point. We both docked on the same turn. So. All right. So let's get, let's call it a tie. Um, it's a tie. And sure. and so you guys get to decide at this point. Um, because now that you've successfully docked, um, first, do you have any questions about how the mechanic worked? No. 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 I felt very natural in the sense that I, I understand, um, you know, thrust and a bit of gravity, and it made sense to me, yeah. even if I'm not, like, expert in that kind of, you know, science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. You, I mean, you, got, you both did very well and uh, have docked almost the exact same position on either side of the space yeah. station. <laughs> so... The purpose of you meeting at the space station was to try to negotiate some peace be between the alliances. But unfortunately, that negotiation did not go well. Oops. And one of the factions has fallen out and stolen um, an important artifact that could be very dangerous to the other factions. So there is someone that is, has stolen an artifact, taken a ship, and is fleeing. And let's call that the Proxmi faction. Mm -hmm. And I'll place them after we decide where we're gonna, who, who's going to do what. So this ship will end up running away from the space station and trying to escape the other side of the board where their jump point is. Right. If they make it there, then um, it's a win for that team or that person yeah. who's playing that ship. If the ship is destroyed prior to that, then the um, two attacking players or two chasing or pursuing players win. Okay. Um, so this scenario now, this, ship, is, this is now a three-player game, which is two versus one. Is that right? Yeah, you could play this with uh, with two players. Yeah. Um, but to make it more interesting and more uh, things to that will happen on the board, um, I'm jumping as as the third player. Yeah. But you can certainly yeah. play a two player and have that one person pursuing another. Right. Okay. Um, in this case, though, if if this ship destroys either of the two pursuing um, ships, then the other ship breaks off at a fear for destruction, and yeah. the uh, the player that's running away wins. Right. So it's since you guys did really well in, in docking and in piloting your ships, you get to decide who who wants to be the pursuers and who want who wants to be the single um, escapee. Oh, are you not playing as the escapee? I can if you'd like. <laughs> what do you think, Russ? I think that would be quite fun. Uh, yeah, I think that would be fun. And also, it would be okay. a way to. Um, broker peace from the negotiations that we've uh, that we were suffering and i believe that we were trying to negotiate who actually docked first i think that's what the <laughs> that, that, that was the cause of the conflict yes yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> absolutely so 
what I'm going to do is set your ships up, if you don't mind. Sure, um, yeah. As they would be in the mission. Um, they can't be too close. That's where they go. And my ship will be here. Okay. So I've stolen this artifact. I need to run away. Yeah. And I know, I know I'll be followed. But your, your faction leaders don't want to see me. They're trying to you know keep this quiet. So you're not allowed to fire within six spaces of the space station. Okay. So you're not allowed to use any of your weapons. Otherwise, the, the space station will, will react and um, attack your ship and do a fair amount of damage to it. So right. try to avoid attacking within the first six spaces. And because I'm at somewhat of a disadvantage in playing against two players, I will go first. Yep. Um, but before we get into that, um, we have to talk about how you're going to load out your ship. Yeah. So if you look next to your uh, velocity board, there is a bunch of modules that I, I picked out um, from the, the list of modules that are pure, mostly combat focused. Um, but there's different types, and they all have icons that represent what their capabilities are. Okay. So um, starting with the particle cannon, it's a very versatile uh, weapon. And it has two modes. One is that it can shoot as a beam. It's pretty straightforward. Now, when you, when you see beam and this line with the hex, um, generally, that means you're firing out of the front of your ship. So if you look at your, one of your ships over here, you're firing out of this front hex, yep. which is in front of the ship, in a straight line, yep. for however, whatever the range of the particular weapon is. And the particle cannon under beam mode has an infinite range, yep. so it can go completely across the board. And if it does damage, it can do three damage. Um, instant just means it happens right away. It doesn't take a round or two to, to occur. Okay. Then the other mode is sweep. So this is a less powerful mode um, for the weapon, but it is more flexible in how it can hit. Yeah. So when we look, look at a sweep or the front arc of the ship, that is the um, entire hex cone in front of the ship. Yeah. So it's not here and it's not here. It's the yeah. front hex cone. Anything uh, within that. <clears throat> yep. Wow. Right. So this is a sweep mode where even if our friendly ship is in that park, <laughs> it's going to take damage. Oh, so it hits everything. It is indiscriminate um, in that mode. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, so that, that will do, I think it's two, two. damage. Um, yeah. All right. So there's a cost to spreading that beam out. It, it does less damage. Okay. Um, I'll go to its little cousin, the particle turret. And that's a smaller module. And um, it does two damage. But it has the benefit of being able to hit anything within six hexes of the center of gravity of your ship. So it doesn't matter what direction that ship is in. Oh, okay. Um, it can hit within six hexes of the center of gravity. Um, and not to mislead you, it's not any straight line. It's yeah. any it's anyway. thing within six hexes. Yep. Okay. Is that and friendly, friendly fire as well? No, that is a single target. So it is a turret that lines up fairly quickly and then can shoot at one target. It's not sweep where it's energizing the entire zone in front of you. Okay. okay. And then we have, I'll jump down to the missile launcher um, because that's a pretty commonly used, what we call deployable um, module. That comes with three missiles mm -hmm. that you actually deploy out of the front of your ship. What I'll do is I'll take one here as an example. Oops, got to change my mode there. Okay. And on, on your activation, what you would do is drop this missile anywhere adjacent to the center of your gravity. So it could be yep. on this hex. It could be anywhere adjacent to your center of gravity. In the case of uh, the, the Rift uh, battle cruiser here, you could even drop it out the back. Right. Um, so you drop it off adjacent and point it in the direction that you'd like it to go. Um, it is agile, meaning you can maneuver it. Um, but direction does matter. So... Um, in this case, point where you like it to go, even though you may change it in the future. And once you activate it, you deploy that missile or whatever the deployable is adjacent to your hex. And then we don't touch it until the end of the round when the sector board activates. And the sector board is the main board. And anything on there that's not a player-controlled ship um, activates. Okay. At that point, you would move that missile. Um, the number of uh, the speed of it, so it can go up to six hexes yep. uh, by the speed. <clears throat> so it can travel up to six hexes, and it can rotate two hexes um, for every hex that it moves. 
So it can go yeah, move pretty. a hex and then turn two and move another hex and then turn two. Okay. So wow. you're really maneuverable on the missiles. The, the larger uh, version of that is torpedo, which is much less nimble. Right. Okay. The other important part to note is the um, the guided indicator. Guided says three. What that means is that missile is going to last on the board for three rounds. Oh. And, right. And the way we do that, especially in Tabletop Simulator, um, we use a stack of three missile tokens. Yep. And every round that you move it, at the end of its movement, just take one off the stack. Okay. If nice. there's no more tokens left, then it's it's off the board. Yep. Okay. Um, and that does three damage, and you get three as part of your module yeah. loading. Okay. Then there is the mine launcher, which is something that I may take as the uh, fleeing <laughs> yep. uh, ship. Uh, that lets me drop a pretty powerful mine. Um, doesn't move on its own. Um, I get three of them, and it's it doesn't move on its own because it says speed of zero. And when a ship gets within two hexes of that, meaning there yep. any hex of that ship is overlapping the, the two hexes away from that um, mine, it explodes for three. Okay. And it does damage to anything in that range. So it could right. be, if I'm too close to the mine when it goes off, I take damage as well. Okay. Um, then we have some other support, kind of support modules. Um, we have a damping field, which will actually slow a ship down. Yeah, uh, within a certain range, so it'll move you, you there. It'll force their vector token to move closer to the center of their velocity gotcha. board. Yep. And then, then we have a jammer, which is useful for um, messing with uh, anything that's guided. So effectively, right. you activate the jammer; it takes uh, a token off of the stack of right. the remaining nice. missiles on the board. Okay. There are a bunch of other ones on the um, extension to the the right of your of the board. And oh, so you're certainly welcome to pick, pick those. Um, yep. So I'll just briefly go over them. Um, we have the torpedo launcher, which is mentioned as a, a less nimble version of a missile, but more, much more powerful and lasts yep. longer. We have the railgun, which um, deploys a railgun dart out of the front of your ship, and its speed is 20. So at that activation phase, it's going to move up to 20 spaces until it makes contact with something. Mm -hmm. And the unique thing about the railgun dart is it does damage to shields but also hits your hull directly and i'll talk about damage right. in moment. okay um we have the mass wave and that's a pretty powerful beam weapon with a limited range uh and it's very expensive to activate um if you look at the cost here and that's represented Six. by the crew mm -hmm. icon and the uh little atom symbol mm -hmm. um it's very expensive um and your ships don't have the ability to fire that right. with the capacitor that you have now unless you do mm -hmm. what we call just charging the module Right. You're allowed to put energy on that module, save it till you actually need it. Right. Okay. And then a bunch of other ones. Um, ones that might be useful in this round are the hardened ammo hole. Um, that gives you an extra ca a capacity for anything that is ammo. So if you pair it with a missile launcher, you get an additional three missiles. If yeah. you pair it with a torpedo launcher, the same thing. So that's those are the modules that you can pick from. Now, okay. before you do that, I'm going to talk briefly about the specialist crews. So on battle cruises, you have uh, three tokens to use um, to, to spend on activations. Yeah. You have the navigation crew, which is the gray token, mm -hmm. uh, which you're spending um, not interactively, but you're only doing the one thing. So you'd be spending that for navigation. and that, But that navigation crew can also repair shields. It can also repair a hull. It can also re, um, repair a reactor. And it can also activate any other module you have installed. But the one thing that this this navigation can't do is are these specialist actions right, on okay. these cards. So each card represents a specialist ability that is added to your ship's abilities in total if you use a specialist token to do so. Yeah. Um, so in the case of support, you have um, their shield expert. So they give you a benefit in repairing shields. It either mm -hmm. costs less or you can repair one for free. Um, if you're using any of these actions on the specialist crew, you simply take that token and place it on that yep. to do the action. Okay. Um, so we have engineers. Engineers let you repair modules. And I'll explain again. When I get to damage, we'll talk about how yep. that, that comes into play. Okay. Now, are um, we limited so, on how many of these modules we add to our ship? I guess what that's, no, that's what this is. Yeah. It's, so it's basically, there's, there's no counting of points. If it fits, 
you can you can take it. Yeah. So this slot on the battle cruiser uh, supports up to four units of modules. Um, so the larger modules are two units. The smaller modules are single units. So you can do any combination of two large modules, one large and two small, or four small. Yeah. Right. So do we have a plan, Russ? Well, I, I don't know about you, but I had a thought. Um, because we're two and he's one, um, he's obviously going to try and get to that space. But I'm assuming that whenever he wants to do something, it's going to like kind of slow him down a bit. So one of us, I feel like, should just go right for attacking him, and the other person should try and like flank and try and kind of rush over to where he's headed. Um, go on, say it. You know you want to say it. Go on, say it. Head him off at the at the at the pass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't watch enough space films for for that reference. <laughs> I think it's a cowboy film, a cowboy reference, isn't it? Head him off at the pass. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. That's the question for chat for this evening. Where did the phrase "head him off at the pass" come from? <laughs> answers, answers on a postcard. Um, I see what you're saying. So one of us goes and attacks him, and the other one maybe speeds up and goes for here, and then yeah. tries to get in the way. And I figured because you're closer to him, maybe you are the one who could like try and hit him straight off. I'll, and I'll could... try and do the attacking. Yeah. And then I can use for... my momentum to sort of like speed over to there without worrying too much about attacking right away. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take the particle cannon. And I think I might just take the missile launcher as well. Uh, okay. In that case, I will. T what, um, you've taken the particle cannon and the. Oh, so the two big ones. All right. <laughs> in you that case, maybe others. I'll there's, go. Um... There's more over here if you wanted the same. Yeah. I think I might do. Can you do multiple of the same, or is it not a good idea to do that? Oh, you sure can. Um, that lets you activate them twice, because normally okay. you can only activate a module once per round. Um, but if you like more versatility uh, for situations, then, then uh, mixing it up makes sense. It's up to your style of play. Sure. Um, well, we, okay, we have so... an answer in the chat from Jonathan. Many Western movies will con uh, contain the phrase, we'll head them off at the pass. So it was Western movies. Um, the exact origin of these phrases has not been determined. But their use picked up considerably by the 1940s through the 1960s. There you go. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, okay. Google said it comes from Western films from the 1940s. There you go. Cool. Sweet. Um, okay, so I think that I might... Um, d do mines last a certain amount of time? No, they just stay, don't they? Okay. Um, they, they, they are on the board till something interacts with them. They, do, they yeah. have uh, an infinite life on the board. Um... And what, what does these capacitors do? They just let you... Or so not capacitor, talking... Yeah, capacitor lets you store energy um, beyond oh. what your current capacitor could hold. So let's say you don't use all your energy um, and you regenerate five, that extra energy can go right on your capacitor, extra capacitor that you've installed. Um, maybe that's something... <laughs> Wait, ah, you know what? Railgun sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that. <laughs> Wait, oh, but it's sick. No, it's three energy, so I can, I can technically do it, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so and I remember, like... you, can tr you can charge your modules. So you, just because your ship can't generate um, enough oh, to... You can always charge them up, and I'll go over that once we start placing cubes. So it's totally fine to just go all attack weapons, right? Sure. Okay. Sweet. All right, so now that you have your modules installed, what you'll do is add a green cube, this is a status cube, to each open square of the module. Sure. And in Tabletop Simulator, I'd recommend that you lock those modules in place so they don't yeah. accidentally move around on you. Done that. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Okay. All right, so let's talk about damage. So the reason why you put those cubes on there is because they represent the relative health of that particular module. Mm -hmm. If um, they lose their status cubes, that means they're disabled. And the only way they get repaired is through engineers, if you have the engineered specialist crew. Yeah. Um, you don't have that crew, they don't get repaired. Okay. Yep. Um, once they're disabled, you can't use them. Um, but be hopefully before you take damage to your modules, you've defended off whoever's attacking you um, and managed your shields. So let's talk about damage. Um, so each module uh, or weapon has indication on what damage it does. If you take damage, that means you remove a cube from right to left, first on oh, yeah. shields, until you get down to no more shields left. Um, once you've remo removed the last shield, um, which you can recharge at any time, you would then t start taking away from hull. 
Hull is more expensive to repair, um, so try to keep your shields managed. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, remove some cubes from right to left from Hull, I'll show what happens if that happens too much. So let's remove the first two. Um, so on this ship, the first yeah. uh, cube of the hull, not much happens. But now you see on the second cube a die. Yeah. Okay? Oh, no. If you were to take damage and it would hit your hull, you roll whatever number of die are revealed. So if you had revealed more, there's more die. Yeah. And so on. And every so every hull damage that you take, you take you you're going to have a chance of that weapon hitting uh, more of your insides of your ship, like right. your modules okay. or your reactor. So you would roll a die, and that would tell you what happens. Mm -hmm. So okay. you'll see there there are two um, indicators for modules on there, A and, yep. B. A and B, and there's also is... a, a reactor icon. Yeah. So yes. if if you roll an A or a B, if you look on the uh, ship dashboard, yep. there's A section, there's a B section. That tells you what cube to take away from top down. Yeah. So in the case of the A slot, you would take this cube off. It really doesn't matter because we only have one module here. But if you had two modules here, you would start off with the top one. Okay. And then take away B if it says B. And okay. if it says reactor, you take one away from the reactor. Right. Okay. Yeah, seems quite clean. We're not going to get damaged, is, so you, you didn't need to explain those rules. That'd be fine. <laughs> what? What's we're going to damage you, though, so... Oh, yeah. That's right. I won't attack you at all. No, no. No, no. Right. You don't want to do that. So, uh, I guess Russ has the first player token. Um, so, I have to it move is. it over to me, because uh, I do get to move first, because, again, I think I'm disadvantaged by trying to fight off two. Yeah. So, I'm going to apply thrust. Two, three. He's making a run for it, Russ. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm getting out of town. And then I will rotate one. Okay. And then I will move my ship. And then, Russ, you can go. Yep. So it's my turn. It is. All right. Well, I'm just going to spend... One, two, three, energy. So when you say charge them up, how does that work? So charging them up means that you're taking one of your crew members, you're placing them on the module, For and you're energy. taking whatever... Yeah, what's that? For two energy, obviously, that, that one, yeah. right? That's yeah, the so you can place them on there and only apply one energy. But that means charging it up, you're not using it right away. Mm -hmm. And But the downside to that is that crew member never comes back to you. Um, until you've activated that weapon. Okay, so I don't want to do that right, ne right now, basically. Okay, so yeah, I'll go that way, and then I think I'll just stop there. I think I'm gonna hold out for uh, for a bit. Uh, actually, no, I will rotate it. I think I'll do that because then at next turn, I think I'm gonna be up here, but then. Yeah, okay, fine. I think so. I'll spend uh, one, two, three, four crystals, four energy tokens to do that. And then that's. Oh, and then I have to do that. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I'm done. Right. And then you so, move your ship. Oh, yeah. What we're saying, oh, my gosh, I always forget that. <laughs> what we're saying is if I want to fire my missile launcher, I have to place one of my crew members on there and spend two energy. Is that right? That, that's correct. Okay. Um, I like your thinking. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. Um, and, and an important thing about firing your weapons is that you can fire that weapon, and in the case of missiles, in the case of anything that you're, that you're activating on your modules, you can do that at any point in, the time, in your movement. That yeah. means you can do it be, at the beginning of your movement, the end of your movement, and along the shortest path um, of your movement. So if you want to fire on the first X that you move to, or the last, or the second to last X, you can fire from that point. Yeah. The only rule is that it has to occur before your rotation, if there isn't. Oh, okay. So it's during the thrusting part rather than the rotating part. Well, you can do it at the end of the rotation. Yeah, if you'd like I think well. I'm going to just... fire. Oh, okay. I, I think I'm going to fire my missiles now before I move. <laughs> 
Well, the space station isn't going to like that. Oh, no, oh, no, yeah. you said you can't fly within six. That was it. Yeah. You did say that, in which case I won't do that then. I'd forgotten about that. Okay. Um, so in which case, yeah, we'll go... Yeah, we'll spend all of the energy. Let's just have a look at that. That's going to end up there... Going like that, which might be a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Let's just, let's go like that. So, right, and then we move. Okay. All right, so that, uh, that's the end of that round. That's the end of the round. First player token moves here. And in case I wasn't clear what the objective is, um, if you look on the other side of the board, there's the A token. That's, that's a placeholder yep. for the jump point. Okay. Okay. And you don't need to dock with that, you just need to reach it. You need to be overlap that point with any hex of your ship at any speed. Yeah. Okay. So I think that I need to... Um, I think I need to just boost past this big asteroid, really. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to spend one... Um, one energy token to move forward one more space. Or maybe maybe another one, do you think? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Sure. Speed Let's up. Do it. Yeah. 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 That looks safe. And then I'm going to use one to rotate it slightly. Cause I need to like possibly just move a little bit over. So yeah, I'm gonna spend one to do that. And then uh oh yeah, sorry, I should have done that. And then I move my ship. Which is here, and then I rotate it so it's that. Yep. And then I am done. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> let's have a look at where I'm going. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> Apparently, I'm going there. <laughs> so yeah, I should have rotated twice, shouldn't I? Right. Okay. So I'm going to spend. One to go to there. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's now out of range. Nice. Yeah. So I will spend another one to rotate there. And then I will use this specialist on the missile launcher and I will spend another two. Nice. I'm going to move my ship first, which goes onto there. And then we are going to launch some missiles. Oh, you've taken the whole stack. Yep. Oh, oh, is that how it works? I see, I see. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's clever, actually. I like that. I thought it was a stack from the, from the side of the board, but that makes more sense. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way of doing it. Because normally in games like this, you have to somehow put like a little dice next to it as a counter. Yeah. But stacking the counters like that, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's quite good. Right, I think that's it. Great. So it's my turn. And I am going to counter that attack. Uh oh. First, I'm going to get some speed up. So I so will. Does, does the um, rocket move at the end of this, at the end of your turn? I think it moves at, at the, the end of the yeah. round, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. It goes at the end of the round in uh, first play order. And if okay. there's any two on the board that, have, um, that are by the same player, then it goes in initiative is basically the number of counters left. So the lower the counters, um it goes first right okay <clears throat> so i'm going to apply two thrust and i am going to rotate one i activate my guy and i'm going to not use my mines yet but charge up my particle cannon That costs three energy for the particle cannon. It costs three, but right now I'm charging it up. So mm -hmm. I can put two on there and it just doesn't fire. I need another energy to actually release it. Right. But you'll generate five more next turn. Correct. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. So I am good. So now it's the end of the round. 
uh-huh. and anything that is on the board on the second board um uh, you move. Move so six. there's a missile there six and then one of the counters comes off yep now you don't have to move that in a straight line if you don't want to it, it does uh, you are allowed to rotate and go a different yep. direction on each hex of movement of the missile no that's good Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the end of the round. You're going to get your energy back. Okay. And first player token moves to yep. um, pull. And if you have any charge uh, energy on modules, that means you have to pull some out of the bag in the middle of the table. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, um, let me have a look at where we are. Yeah, it's not quite in re- I'm not quite- the particle cannon- well, it's got the sweep, hasn't it? But for me to get lined up perfectly, I can't at the moment. Uh, let me just have a check at where I'm going. So I can't fire the particle cannon mid-move, or can I? You can. <gasps> nice. So in this case, I would, <laughs> I would start moving, I'd fire the particle cannon, and then I'd finish moving. Would it reach yes. though? It's only got range of six, isn't it? Oh yeah. But you could. Oh uh, no no no! Uh, range of six in sweep mode. In beam mode, it's got infinite range. Yeah. So beam mode would be good. Yeah. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do actually. Um, so let me just check the movement first. Uh, I definitely need to go there. Now, I'm not going to get in the way of you, am I, Russ? Where, where are you going? Uh, well, Let's am I allowed to thing. check? I guess I am, right? Um, well, I was going to move a bit further than you, but I could... Okay. Um, I was going to move between these asteroids. Yeah. Okay, I'll try and move a bit more. So I'm, I'm thrusting twice. One, two... Um, to be fair, I could orientate my ship so I go a bit further upward. So yeah, as long as you leave like a, lo- a like a single line gap for me, like um, like this kind of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Particle cannon is three, so that's it. That's my five energy. Okay. Okay. So you fired at me. I took three damage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a straight line within range six. Three damage. Yeah. So that comes oh, off your wonderful. shields. Nice. Uh, and then we move First to... First blood. <laughs> we move to here. Now, what's that going to do to me next time? Let me, just, let me just check next time. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, that's all right. I'm good with Maybe that. You've still got your rocket kind of heading, so... It is, yeah. Take a little bit more damage out of it. <laughs> yeah. Rachel the rocket, on her way. <laughs> all right. And now Russ goes. Oh, okay. Well, wow. Okay. Um, Does he? No, yeah. I... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I didn't go. I think oh, yeah. You, it is. It? Yeah, it is yeah. you. I did think it was a bit I took soon. the damage. Yeah. I thought that was my turn. All right. So I will <laughs> uh, apply a thrust. I was so disappointed that I took damage. Um, apply thrust for two. And then I am going to. Hmm. Give me some room here. Rotate two. Yeah, I don't think this rocket's going to reach you. If the rocket only moves six and you're always moving four away, then yeah. yeah. So that's where if you turn it and kind of lead the target, um, yeah. you have a better chance of hitting. Yep. Yeah. All right, that is my round. Now, I want, do want to point out one other thing here. Um, so I have a crew member um, on the module, and yeah. I've spent the crew member on navigation. So mm-hmm. you don't get all your crew members back each turn. You get, uh, for the battle cruiser, you get two back. So oh, if you spend okay. three, um, all three go to crew recovery after you've done their action. So after you've done navigation, you move the crew member to the bottom of the board. After you've done any module or repairing, um, the move that crew member to the bottom of the board, and then at the beginning of the round, you can pull back up to two. Um, on larger ships, you can pull back more, um, but on the battle cruiser, you can only pull back two. 
Okay. And you've repaired one damage off I your have shield? Not, I have not repaired, but that is a good idea. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> Thanks well, for yeah. reminding me. I'm just so checking, because did didn't you, didn't you take three damage? Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, right. Okay. I thought I'd missed something. I, must, I, I put it in the wrong spot. Um, so I'm repairing my shields with um, a specialist crew. Right. That means that I can send one and um, I can repair two shields for one energy. Yeah. Or one shield for free. Yeah. Exactly. So I will do that. Okay. But now what you're saying is you've used all three of your crew, so you're only going to get mm -hmm. two of them back. Correct. Okay. But this one's sitting on the module, so yeah. it's not going to leave that module until I fire it anyway. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. Uh, Russell, I believe it's you. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm currently planning to go there, but if I moved um, if I moved to this way for two energy and then rotated it that way, yeah, it's good. that would see me kind of... Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So it cost me three energy um, to do that, and I've used this guy for navigation and yeah i mean i'm just looking at my weapons and yeah i don't see any reason to use it yet nope i mean maybe next turn depending on what he does but yeah uh i think i'm just gonna have to do that uh unless yeah does that does that seem right i think that seems right it's right i mean you're yeah, you may, it it may be useful to charge something Oh, you mean put them on, put the energy on, but I have to yeah. put the guy on it as well, right? You yeah. do, yes, that's true. So, probably, probably this one, right? The railgun. No, I haven't so, got enough energy. Okay. No, but you can put two on it. Oh yeah, true. And then finish uh, it off next turn or the turn. Railgun, after. it's just a straight like one shot, and it will pretty much hit as long as he's um, in sort of view, which I could technically make happen. So yeah, let's do that. Let's try that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to put the energy on here. Um, and yeah, I'll just put two of the crystals on there so it's yeah. not going to waste, basically. Yeah. Okay. So then right. that's the end of my go. So, so I'm going to no, move my ship first. So let's yeah. rotate that and then put that there. And uh, then it's the end of my go. So I flip that token over. And um, these guys... This guy moves to the bottom, but obviously I can put him back because yes. I didn't use only one of them. So, right, my missile has moved six. You say get the Very energy close. at the end of your turn, not the end of the round. Is end of the round? I think. Uh, at the beginning of the next round. Oh, yeah. Beginning of the okay. next round. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. So that that is the end of the round. It looks like Paul, you already moved the missile. So I did. now it's the end end of the I... round, and we'll we. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say I think you can get him with that missile. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think it was going to catch me, but there it is. Yeah. All right, cool. But I'm also moving first on this turn and... Putting yourself in not... position. <laughs> yeah, so I can decide whether I'm going to loop around and try to put some distance or go direct. Ooh. I, I am at least going to prepare for the worst. I'm going to turn. Okay, oh, so I can get my energy back now. Okay. One sec. Two. Yes, you can. And you keep the energy on the railgun that you just charged up. Yeah, that's good. Um, Fenrir. And then I will charge up my particle cannon to fire when I want to. Now, okay. because I have this charge up completely now, yep. I can use that as a reaction, meaning... I can fire that on anybody else's turn and movement. Oh, right. Okay. Nice. Um, it happens after um, um, the movements have been decided on, mm -hmm. and it goes in the order of the player who's moving the ship first. So right. if you, you decide to recharge your shields um, prior to me doing that, then you recharge shields, or if it's after, then you have to take the damage and repair shields later. Okay. Yep. Um, so that is what I'll do. So I'm charged there. There is a question in the chat uh, from Edward who basically says, uh, can you use turrets to try and shoot down missiles? 
You can. Uh, particle torts, and generally anything that has a tort or countermeasure keyword will allow you to tar um, target um, anything that's guided. So in that case, the particle tort would do an equivalent of two, remove two timers from any right. uh, guided weapon. Okay. Yeah. So you could, would if you wanted to, have charged your particle turret and got rid of that missile. I could. Yeah. And maybe I should do that. Shh, don't give him ideas. Uh, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, actually, I'm going to say I'm going to charge my energy up on the missile launcher. Now that you're giving me ideas, uh, your mind launcher, right? Okay. There you go. All right, and that is the end of my turn. Okay. So over to you, Russell. Okay. So now, where am I moving at the moment? Okay, so I won't be able to um, to get him this turn. No. But based on the fact that I'm moving first next round, I should be able yeah. to pummel him with some damage on my next turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate one. Because mm -hmm. um, direction, obviously matters right yeah <laughs> yeah okay so i think as long as i don't move forward i think he can't get me one two three four five uh i think i'm okay okay i think i'm okay so i'm just gonna do one energy to do that and then uh well because i'm pretty sure i'm gonna use that railgun next turn can i put crystal on it and then just not use it still is that okay yep you can. yeah I'll do that, and then I think what I could do as well is because um, I don't think you're coming this way. I think I'm gonna set a mine, <laughs> or or do I go for the Omni? Because if he's coming this direction, then Omni would be useful as well, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Maybe charge up the particle turret. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> and that's not going to reach this turn, but hopefully it will next turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you so must have used your navigation one, which means you've used all three of your crew for this turn. Yeah. yeah. Is that that's okay though? Because I'm going to yeah, use it, weapons. It just next means turn. if you do use all of them by firing the weapons, you will only get two of them back. But yeah, that's fine. I think that's still yeah. the right move. Yeah, I do as well. I'm. I'm again. Also, like treating this as a learning a game and yeah. oh well if i make a mistake <laughs> yeah there you go um, but then that's that's your job paul is to clear up my mess yeah, that... <laughs> <laughs> so um i think i'm good with that and i will okay. just move my ship so i'll just move it up here and then switch it like that and actually maybe i don't even need to use my um my movement next turn anyway yeah so yeah, um that. okay yeah so that's my turn done so i flip right. that over well i definitely need to trust one so oh yeah <laughs> i don't oh no i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to rotate as well because otherwise i crash into the asteroid <laughs> or me <laughs> um, oh no you're fine if you go there actually yeah you're right you will crash into the asteroid <laughs> yeah so Oops. i think I think I'm safe there, just about. Um, and then I will. I don't know what that's doing on the particle cannon. That shouldn't be there. Oh, because I used it. Um, so I'm going to spend two energy and fire a missile as well. So I yeah, could I... put one energy on the particle cannon. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Let's do that. <laughs> so movement I'm going to do the movement first and then we're going to fire the missile okay <laughs> ouch yeah. Yeah. yeah there we go right Gosh. I think that's the end of the round wait I think both of them can get him yeah yeah it does look that way <laughs> alright so that's the end of the round so go ahead and move your missiles Three, four, five. Oh, that is well played. Well played. Uh, That's that one. And oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just hits the front of the ship. 
All right. So that is. So I keep. What happens is the damage doesn't stop. Um, any rollover damage continues to t um, take mm. away from hull. Yeah, I've is exposed... the hull all you need to defeat to win, basically? No. So this is where a little bit of luck comes into play. Um, once you're at a hull, you're rolling six up to six dice. Yeah. Um, once you have removed all your uh, reactor cubes, that's when the reactor goes critical and you explode. There's always a chance of recovery um, as long as you have a reactor. Um, but the odds reduce significantly as you take more cubes away. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So, so then, what's happened here? One... How many how many shields did you have left before I hit you with the missiles? So I had four. You had four. So yeah. I took away three and three. then three more. And then three more. And the next time you get hit, that's when you roll the dice. No, I roll it right now. Oh, you roll it's it now exposed. as soon as it's revealed. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you roll it again every time I get hit in the hall. <laughs> if it's exposed. So let's see what happens here. Ooh, oh, that hurts. You hit my reactor. Yeah. Ouch. So now next round, I only can generate four energy. So what's your, I mean, what's your kind of plan to, to, to recuperate? Is it just re repair, 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 basically? Run and away. hope that you don't get hit. <laughs> and, and hope I escape before I explode. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, true. Those yeah. are my two plans right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So next round. All right. That's the end of the round. You can regenerate your energy. I'll be taking that token. Thank you. <laughs> the uh, first player token. Oh, and now I. Uh, and this is where player order matters. So you're gonna have. You guys are going before me. So this is gonna be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd say interesting is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So movement. I think I'm okay with just doing that. Yeah. I don't need to. To do anything, unless you'd rather me try and get out of your way, Paul. No, 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 that's all good. Yeah. All good. Okay. Because I am moving the furthest away I can, so I think we'll be all right. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I don't spend any energy on that. But uh, as I move, I'll be sending. Oh, actually, the um, particle turret. That's a targeted attack, right? Yeah. So it doesn't yes. att attack Paul. It attacks me. Uh, attacks you directly, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Cool. So, uh, on that basis, oh gosh, you're not going to like this. Um, no, gonna... it doesn't, does not seem that way. <laughs> Are so you within while range I'm for the particle here, turret? I'll, I'll let off my railgun. Can okay. I do both of so, the weapons at the same time? You sure can, if so, they're charged up. I don't need to stop that, I know, but I'm just kind of indicating this sure. is when I would fire it. When, so... uh, when I was here, right? Okay, so put your ship in which hex you get, which of the shortest paths you're going to take. And then what you do normally um, is because that, that railgun dart moves at the end of the round, you place the rail dart, railgun dart, which is the, the um, one oh, of the three, okay. in the front of your ship and face it towards where you'd like it to go. It has to go mm -hmm. in the direction of the ship. And then at the end of the round, that's going to move. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, the end of the round. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Oh, but. I think I'm fine because that's where you're going. Yeah. Okay. I did not now, think about that, but that's actually okay. So I thought I it was an think, instant one. Sorry. No. The yeah, instants are the really... beams, but we're all going to. Oh, actually okay. Have... Well, I'll shoot the beam yeah. as well. <laughs> I um, figured you would. And um, how do I resolve this? Just take the energy off and then just remove the token, right? The yeah. So like, the energy here? comes yeah. off, and your crew goes to crew recovery, which is the section below the ship dashboard. Is this particle kind of uh, particle turret in range? One, two, three, four, five, six. Not in the hex he chose, um, but I, I would say you can adjust that and move to the other hex. It's still the shortest path. Oh, so I would have to. So you could have gone there, right? Okay. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, fine. So that that is technically allowed because it's on the. You got one, two, three, four, five. So you could you you could go in a curve basically between. Oh, because it's from where my it's not from the front of my ship. It's from the center, is it? No, it's from the front, but because this isn't a perfectly straight hex line, um, you can when you move your ship on these on odd angles, you can you actually take the shortest path in hexes, and that's as as the, the kind of Got pilot it. of your ship, you decide yeah. which shortest path, and that hex is actually on one of the okay. shortest paths. Well, and, I think what and... Russ is saying is is that would have been okay because it's from the front. One, two, oh, three, four, five, six. No particle. 
particle tor is from the center of gravity, so it would be just out of range if he was on that hex. Oh, okay. okay. But it has to hit any part of your ship to count, doesn't it? Correct. So ah, that's right. why moving gotcha. there would just put me in range, because it's one, It would two, just put you in range, correct. Gotcha. You go. Okay, so okay, so I'll fire that off as well. Um, so a particle turret fires for two damage. Yep. And now I roll three dice. So let's see what happens. Oh, wow. So you're rolling... Yeah, so you do the damage, and then you roll. Right. All right. So what is that? I, I did a damage Two to A's. A. Two, Two A's. So I lose my particle can. Oh, that's... Gonna be oh, bad. no. <laughs> I feel very sorry for you, but, I mean, <laughs> that just goes to show you, stealing is wrong. It is. <laughs> so, and because you destroyed it, uh, a... a module that has a crew member on it, that crew is also unavailable for the rest of the game. What? It means... Oh, wow. Yeah, not not dead, just unavailable for the rest of the game. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's, uh, he got some vacuum. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'll finish movement, and then that's it. Now, because I didn't actually use my um, my navigation, I just left it as it was, I actually get all my crew back at the end of this round, right? Yes. Cool. So. And I didn't spend any energy, so um, I'm just wondering if there's anything I could do. Maybe, um, maybe just for fun. Um, sh oh, I shouldn't drop the mine. No, I won't drop the mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'll, I'll, I'll stick at that. So yeah, that's the end of my turn. Okay. So, um... yeah, I think I'm just gonna. Use the navigation to rotate one. Oh, I seem to be missing an energy. Oh no, it's there. Um, now, am I going to hit this railgun or not? No. 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 Uh, the, 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 there's no uh, effect for hitting small munitions. Yeah. Or overlapping okay. small munitions, unless it has a proximity. We'll, and then we'll charge um, up that. Uh, and we'll charge up the missile launcher as well. I have a question. Sure. What happens if you go off the edge of the board? Yeah. <laughs> so it depends on which um, direction you're going. So you, you would always move your ship um, as though it could move, but you can't move beyond. So you would move along the edge in the direction that your velocity token is facing you mm -hmm. um, until you are able to get the token back um, and, and facing the other way. Okay. So you don't stop necessarily, but you move much less because of... I mean, you don't never go off the board, but you move okay. laterally along the edge. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's good. Um, yeah. So I'm going to move to here, but whilst moving, so while I was there, I will fire the particle cannon. Oof. Okay. Which is three and that damage. was four... Uh, so no more hull. We don't take reactor as a roll, but we just end up rolling more dice. Right. Uh, so let's see if you cause my um, reactor to go critical. That is five dice. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a lucky roll. I am still alive. <laughs> um, but I do lose my all my modules. Ooh. And that's some more crew gone off to the farm to I, live I, happily I, ever I, after. Yeah, I should have taken the advice of that one commenter and used that particle toward earlier. Yeah. All right. Um, so that is your turn. No, because I'm launching a missile oh. as well. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> right, she's going there. But yes, that is it for me. So I use all three of my crew. All right. So they go into crew recovery. You can pull them back to later. Yep. And it is in the end of the round. I think I go, right? So yep. let's see where I will end up. Oh, man, I really have to make it out of there. So I'm going to apply one thrust. Oh my gosh, I just seen where my railgun is going to miss. Is it? And then yeah. one rotation. Yeah, because he's not going to be now. there. Can you not rotate the railgun? No. No, yeah, we're going to go straight. Oh, that was bad. Well, that was bad plan. Makes sense. <laughs> hey, at least I let off my... Um... Uh-oh. 
Oh, but oh no. Do you so have the to rail gun must be really A, hard right? to to get right, and you must fire it at the time when you're yes. the one going last in the round. Yeah, yeah, the time it time it right. It is hard. It is hard to hit. Yeah. Oh man, you know what? I wish I had put my mine now. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. All right. <laughs> So you have that. That was the end of my turn. Um, mm -hmm. I did all I could because I have no more. Crew, well, I have one crew left, um, but certainly no more modules to to use with them. So I might have to start. And I have no more specialists. I lost all my specialists. Wow. So I really just need to get out of here. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, your missile has hit me again. Yeah. Glad <laughs> another, another six dice. Oh, not again. Oh, so lucky. So how many, lucky. How many, um, I mean, you have lost your wep other weapon. <laughs> yeah, he's lost all his I weapons. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But it's the reactor that we need to hit. I just wanted to check these dice. Are they legit? <laughs> 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 yep, they've all got them. <laughs> uh, okay. But it's well, only I'll, on I'll as a one. <laughs> yeah, it's only on a result of a one. So it's actually quite hard to yeah. get rid of somebody. Sure. All right. So actually, you could make it out this turn then, as long as Paul doesn't destroy you, because you're. That is, yes, that is possible. Okay. So facing the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. No ground. Come on, Paul. <laughs> yeah. So the two crew that I'm going to drag back. Well, let's first. You could have just a look fly at... into him. Well, if you look at where I'm going, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Is it worth it? Literally, you, he, this guy's stolen something. So Rumming to speed, him, Mr. We send Sewer. one of our own crews to suicide into them, destroying him, you, and the items. Yeah. What what lo what lesson was learned in this all of this? So, Larry, what's the collision rules? It's really simple. So, um, <laughs> if your center of gravity would land on top of the ship, you yeah. simply go one hicks beyond along the same path. If it would land before you stop your movement one hex prior, so that you're not overlapping. Okay. Well, mine is like if I don't rotate or change my thrust now, what's going to happen? So you would end up over here, right? So I don't collide with you. No, not um, not in the the core rules of the game. There's advanced rules where we ha we handle more complex collisions, okay. but in the in the core rules, to keep things moving. Um, there are no ship to ship collisions. Sure. Okay, so, yeah, I'm not sure how I can... Well, no, I can use the particle cannon. So mm -hmm. I get two crew back. Um, and it'll just be one on there, one on there. I should have five energy back. But then I'm going to spend uh, three energy for the particle cannon. And I think I'm spending one energy to rotate and i can fire before i move you no. can um but your rotation happens at the end oh, the end so am i going to have to rotate twice so where's that going to put me again you continue along the same path so if you're rotating to be what this way uh yeah sort of northeast yeah so then you would end up over here i don't know there which is absolutely no good for hitting you so wait hang on where was where was your token to start with uh it was there oh uh, because i was thinking like how great it would be if um you could just get in his way but i don't think that's gonna you could land on the spot because that would stop yeah I wonder if I can get there. I probably can't. One, two, three. No, I could, but no, I couldn't. That's a shame. I would still, I would still go through you by the the the, the simple collision rules. So I would okay. still technically overlap the, the heck. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I don't think there's much I can do here. Um, so yeah, I think all I'll do is I'll just I'll rotate twice and I will end up. Well, if you rotated. Um, Two times the other way, you would end up kind of like this, and then oops, <laughs> end just... up be here. I'd end up there. Oh, oh that's great! I'll do that. I think technically you were there. Is that right? 
Yeah. That's where it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now I can fire the particle cannon. Wait, sure am can. I going to be in the way? I don't mind, but I'm... no, no, no. This is the uh, this is the beam. Oh, okay, cool. <gasps> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There you go. Right. And, uh, all right. Let's see if I remain, continue to be as lucky as I have been. Oh, oh down to one. Up. Oh man. Okay. Down to... But you only have and one you... energy, so he might not have enough. Um... Well, no. Oh wait, you've got no, four you only refill after that. I see. I see. Okay. And I'm 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 moving anyway. So yeah, the question is, can I turn? Yeah. To overlap. Will, that, will his lack of energy be enough to get oh, him yeah. where he needs to go? Well, it is now your go, Larry. But you've got four energy for this turn. Wow. Okay. So that seemed to have been successful. Well, at least if it was another turn. So I am going to... I think I may have overshot this. I actually. think you have, yeah. I think you got a bit too fast. Wow. It's come... Yes, I have, I have overshot this. Yeah. Wow. All right, I'm coming in for the kill. <laughs> There's nothing else I can do except nope. look at my piloting in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that is my turn. Yep. Okay. All right. So now, so now, now. first player goes to me. <clears throat> uh, no, um, Russ has got to take a nope. turn. I gotta go. Oh, yep. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as it stands right now, I could just rotate and then ply him with the railgun. Yeah. I think and that's that the best hit. option, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to rotate. Um, I'm going to rotate twice, so that's going to be two of my energy. Is that right? Or do I need to... Um, just no, actually, I don't need to, do I? I just need to rotate once. Yeah. Yeah, because that will put me facing directly into you. And then oh, I will. So that's one of my energy. And then I'll just use my specialist man to do a. Wait. Oh no, the rail gun I don't want to do. I probably just do the um, the particle turret instead. Why don't you want to do the rail gun? Because it it activates at the. Oh, it's the end of my turn. Okay, mm. perfect. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is the perfect yeah. time for you to use the rail gun because you're the last person in the turn. Yes. All right. Done. Um, I did move, so I did use that as well, um, but I only rotated once, so I think I'm good. Um, yep. Is there anything else I want to do? Do I want to charge the... Um... <laughs> Wait, where will I end up? You'll oh, end up uh, there. I think I'll just put a mine out as well, why not? Yeah, oh, no, why not? I no, I can't because I haven't got enough uh, energy. Okay. Oh, well. ne next turn. Oh, no, I can, I can do this. Just you can charge case. it up. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there you go. That's the um, so I move my ship. Um, so in this instance, I'm literally just right there. Yeah. Um, and the what does that there. mean? Oh, you've already put it there. Okay, I good. I put it there. Yeah. All right. So then, uh, I will. Well, it's the end of the turn, right? So, it's the end of the round. Yeah. So oh, now I will activate. Is that wait? Who who's activates first? It doesn't matter because I'm the only one, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. only one on there. So yeah, rail gets. Maybe. All right, so if I get a reactor symbol on this roll, oh. I am, boom, my reactor goes critical. Yeah. And I would have made it out if I just made one more adjustment, but you guys have. <laughs> that was a lot closer it. than I thought it would be. <laughs> that was a lot closer. Yeah, we were massively unlucky with the dice a couple of turns ago, but then we got quite lucky last time with three three hits. <laughs> yeah. So. Um. I want to, I'll just e high five you, virtually high five you, Paul. Yeah. And uh, I will actually virtually shake your hand um, for making this game. It was, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've, we've only seen, obviously, we saw movement. So we've seen how that works. We've also seen the basics of combat, but we did see a few mechanisms. We saw the direct fire. We've seen the missiles. We've seen the railgun. What bits of the game haven't we seen? So there's um, multiple different ship types that have different handling capabilities. Right. The smaller yeah. ship lets oh, you yes. kind of uh, <laughs> thrust horizontally and laterally. This way you get a little maneuverability. Right. The larger destroyer has um, eight slots for modules and right. also allows you to uh, have a commander. And that commander significantly influences the entire 
Vanguard. If you have three ships, they, they, their effects apply to all three ships. Right. Uh, and they provide additional benefits, like maybe having a module fired twice or scaring crew off their stations on another ship. Um, wow. You have a, more specialist crew cards um, that allow you to um, affect the play. For example, if you had um, a munitions expert, you'd be adding extra timers to your anything that's guided. Right. And um, there are automatons. So if you're playing solo or even a game where mm. there's could be a uh, opponent that is not controlled by a player but is affecting the play, they're controlled by um, automaton cards that yeah. um, dictate how they move. And they are, will find their waypoints and they will find targets and navigate just like you do. Right. That was one of the questions in the chat from Jonathan quite a while ago, actually, is how would this scenario work if we were playing solo? So if you're playing solo, one of the ships, um, or even the escaping ship could be an automaton as well, because um, it's designed in a way that it will find waypoints based upon yeah. the, them the, being defined in the missions. So the, usually it probably be better off to have the attacker be the uh, automaton in that, in that particular mission. Right. And it would seek out and take every opportunity to hunt you down and use the uh, weapons it has built in to do so. And that right. would be... Uh, you'd be able to tier that by level of difficulty by using different grades of automatons. Okay. Is it card based or app based? That what you just said. What's that? Um, the automaton is that card based or app based? That card based. Okay. So all the all the movement. What, the way it works is there are uh, passive, there are aggressive and passive actions. Mm -hmm. If the ship, if the automaton is in passive mode, it only does the passive actions, in which case it would be navigating to waypoints or trying to get to a particular location, uh, re-energizing itself, defending itself. Uh, but once it is in aggressive mode, and that could be done by being attacked or by a particular milestone in a mission, then it would do the, all the aggressive actions first, including firing um, on an opponent and or intercepting the opponent or chasing them from behind. Um, and then also do the passive one. So if it has enough energy at the end of all of its aggressive actions, it would then attempt to heal itself. It's under attack. That's okay. all on one card um, for each automaton. Right. You talked about the other ships. Do you have any of the um, the ship templates handy that you can show us? No, I, all the ships that okay. I have on here are um, the ships that you have for the factions. Right. Um, the other card-based tokens for... Um, the enemy ships are, um, are, are the cardboard tokens that go on the board. Right. Because, uh, yeah, I have to admit, the movement for the battleship was quite hard to get right because it could only thrust in one direction. So I am keen to see how the smaller ships move. You said that they have the ability that they can thrust laterally, giving you a lot more control. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, one of the ships. Um, and I can I think I can add one here real quick. I thought you also said there was a ship that let you um, thrust, then change direction, then thrust again, right? Yeah, that's exactly the one I pulled out there. So that yeah, is right. the actual, the, the smaller ship can do that. And I'm going to import that card. Oh, yeah, that's, this is what I meant. If we can just have a look at this. I'm just keen to sure, see how this works. Oh, the tokens. Yeah, the tokens yeah. from before. Yeah. Just loading just now. Me a moment here. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had them on the on the uh, in the simulator to begin with, but it was it was taking up a lot of room, so I didn't. Yeah, if there have been a few them. questions in the chat about how much space does this game take up. So, how big is this board going to be? That board is thirty two inches uh, by thirty six inches. Right. So let me just find the correct ship here. Okay, so Any other questions in the meantime while I find that board? That's quite a striking um, table presence. Yeah. So how many um, miniatures are included in the game? How many ships per side? There's three ships per faction. There are four factions included in the game. Right. Um, and each faction has a uh, destroyer, battle cruiser, and um, scout, strike scout. Yeah. So what you see here is, is what you get. Exactly. Are these, the, are these the final 3D models for the ships? Um, those are close to final, so right. we expect some revisions um, as we um, get some local prototypes yep. uh, done um, and print out some, some resins. 
um, and we'll make improvements to the, the models and add some more detail. Um, but they were beautifully designed uh, by Balance Sheet and they were really happy with the style that they present. They're mm -hmm. meant to capture kind of the style of that particular uh, faction. So here's an example of the smaller, it's actually, you can scale yeah. it up a bit, but um, this has the ability to apply four thrust and up to two rotations uh, per energy spent of rotation. Yep. And it also can do a lateral thrust. So the way this ship would work is if we have this small token here. Um, let's say you're in this position with your token. You can obviously apply four and go fast, but you can actually apply thrust laterally. Right. And that means that you can move a hex here, a hex here, a hex here or a hex right. here. Okay, nice. And you can choose to rotate before or after your thrust. Does yeah, that mean that you can that, turn which is first why it and says then four thrust slash to rotate. It isn't in a specific order. Correct. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, cool. So how many scenarios have you got for the game? Obviously this is scenario one, which was split into the sort of two yeah. parts. Yeah, we How have 18 plan scenarios um, that take place in the timelines along um, certain events. And okay. there'll be a different objectives of each of the scenarios. It could be something as simple as this. Um, one scenario um, that we just played the other night is called uh, Derelict Escort, where you have uh, one, one person trying to defend um, a derelict ship before it gets to a jump point, while the other two are trying to attack and um, um, disable that ship. Right. Um, so that could play in any, any, any player count. But there's a number, uh, 18 different uh, missions, all with uh, varying play styles built in. Um, right. So you can set those missions for different number of okay. players and different kinds of uh, modes. Okay. And this mission that we played here today, so this is the first one that will be recommended you play. What happens if there was four of us and we all wanted to play this game tonight and this was the first mission? Part one would be okay, but what about part two? So part two would be, one would be a, a defender uh, mm -hmm. of the ship that is escaping. Oh, right. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, so of the four players that played in part one, one of them is the one that's stolen the thing and he's trying to get away. Another player is exactly. defending them. And then the other two players are, right. Okay. Nice. You got it. So. And if that, if his, uh, if his friend was to, um, the, the, player that's defending him was to be destroyed that doesn't in that case it doesn't end the mission yeah they get to spawn from that jump point yeah okay um and obviously playing this tonight with us playing online using tabletop simulator is always a little bit slower than in, if playing in person but we did this in an hour and a half and that mm -hmm. was with learning okay yes. are some of the other missions longer i'm guessing they are if they contain multiple ships Yes, uh, right. they do, and they range in length. So one particular mission where um, you, your, your goal is to um, discover and gather resources um, and multiple resources and then escape to a jump point is probably twice as long as what we just played. Right, okay. Which, for somebody who played Starfleet Battles in the 80s and then Federation Commander in the 90s, spending six hours <laughs> to move your ships across a board and then have one round of rolling dice and blowing somebody up, this is fine. <laughs> and, you know, I've made reference at the start to old style sci-fi combat games that I used to play a long time ago. Yeah. By modern standards, those games are now, in my opinion, unplayable. Because, yeah, you literally play it for hours and hours and hours, manoeuvring your ships around, and then you have a couple of, couple of rounds of just rolling a whole boatload of dice and somebody's ship blows up. And it's like, it's just painfully slow. Whereas this one... <laughs> seems quite streamlined in terms of the rules and the complexity we got into the action fairly quickly the only reason we didn't attack each other on round one is because the station didn't want me firing any weapons within six seconds <laughs> um but then when the damage worked it was again that was that was relatively simple it was just deal damage remove cubes mm. and once the shield's gone you go to the hull and things like that so yeah i i think also um one of the things i really liked about it is that um, well, I like this with games in general, when the theme and the mechanisms and what you do in the game feels like is what would happen in real yeah. life. So the way the ships moved, even like I said at the beginning, like I'm not good at, you know, I'm not 
I didn't study physics per se, you know, past right. GCSE, whatever, but I genuinely felt like that's how the ships would move. And then mm -hmm. the way that you fire weapons, it made sense. Of course, you would like drift and then shoot on the way to your kind of new kind of space. I think it all made sense logically. Yeah. So that really helped me to get right into the game and understand it. And I feel like because of that, I had fewer questions to ask about the rules and stuff. Yeah, it is one of those things that a lot of sci-fi films and sci-fi shows kind of disregard physics. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are some which, which do it quite well. Um, but yeah, you know, when you're moving in a certain direction at a thousand miles an hour, in order to stop moving in that direction at a thousand miles an hour, you've actually got to turn around and then thrust mm -hmm. a thousand miles an hour in the other direction in order to slow down. And as you say, most of the big ships, their engines are at the back. So you can't just slow down. The way you slow down is by turning around and going back the other way. Um, mm. There's a question. There's a comment in the chat. Uh, a streamlined version of Starfleet Battle says Tim with the physics of Triplanetary. Now I've not played Triplanetary. Have either of you two played it? I haven't. No, no. I have not. Oh, well, there we go. Um, okay. If you have any other questions in the chat for Larry while he's here, because we we thought we were going to be a couple of hours tonight. We've got a quarter of an hour left. So if anybody has any other questions in the chat uh then let us know when how long does the kickstarter run for larry kickstarter goes till on uh, november 18th i believe it is yes i think okay. it's the wednesday november 18th um just uh launched yesterday yeah and uh you know we right now we have the the single reward um but hopefully as things progress we'll, we'll be looking forward to adding new things to the campaign okay so you've got ideas of future stuff that you can add but right now it is oh just, yes yeah <laughs> Yes, we're looking to um, be successful with the core game, and uh, we do have uh, at least two expansions planned and a couple right. other surprises when okay. we get there. How long have you been working on this game? Uh, the mechanics of it have we been working on since April of 2019. Wow, so that's a lot of progress made in a in a fairly short space of time. Relatively short period of time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 2020 has been several years long. <laughs> it feels um, that way. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, that's that's a massive. It's the kind of game I feel like um, it feels like a like a sort of a pet project, you know, that you've been thinking about it in your head for you know years and years. But to think you've only been like a year and a half on it is crazy, crazy uh, progress. In a good way, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank I mean, you. no, not wanting to because I, I I do quite a bit of game development myself, and I'm always interested in in talking to people because as i say what we've played tonight <clears> feels <throat> like it's quite streamlined and i'm curious <clears throat> to know six months ago did you have an overcomplicated system that you've eventually managed to just chop bits off and you've ended up with this or was it always fairly streamlined from the start and you've actually been adding bits so the uh, velocity me mechanic the only thing improvement we've made there is to the experience and how how you can interpret the movement from what you see on the board um but the everything else has has evolved quite a bit um right. there were well, we ship dashboards and there's always been this concept of of kind of resources of energy um but it, we it used to be card based where you would pick your actions through cards right. um the shape of the board was very different so if you look at the whole pictures it, it looks like a very different game um, from what it is now. Um, so right. yeah, some things have been removed and some things have been added where it made sense, I hope. Yeah, so Tim is in the chat uh, and Tim used to teach physics and he said the velocity board is an ingenious method. Um, and yeah, I, w I was wondering how it was all going to work. And then as soon as you described it and you put this token there and then that shows you where you're going to move to, it was like, well, this is so easy. This, this, is just, this just works. So... It's right, just when you're moving five comment. in one direction and you want to carry on moving in that direction and you want to shoot in that direction, but you also want to slow down and you're like, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cool. Right. OK, um, so we'll wrap things up there. Um, thank you very much okay. for your time, Larry, and coming us and teaching us. And obviously, thank you to everybody for watching this. This video was intended to yeah, show you the game, see how it plays. You've seen the core mechanisms of the game. You've seen how combat works, which is probably the main bit. But as we mentioned at the start, this was just mission one. OK, just mission one uh, using the battleships. Um, and you said 18 missions included in the game? 18 included in the game uh, for the core game. Hopefully yeah. we intend some more surprises later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So plenty of other stuff uh, going on. Anything else you want to add 
Uh, Larry, before we close things off. Uh, no, I just want to say thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate um, you know spending your valuable time playing the game. Um, and of course, to the, the people watching, you can go visit the Kickstarter page, yep. uh, follow us, and we'll be um, kind of at, at the virtual event of Spiel Digital um, mm -hmm. this week. Um, I'll have a virtual booth with hourly learn to play sessions uh, oh, cool. Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and then some live play sessions on the evening of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as well. Right. So you'll be able to catch up with us then. Yeah. So if anybody is watching this now who actually fancies having a go at this game, then yeah, you can for the next four days at Spiel, uh, Spiel Digital. So, well, I will wish you luck because I'm going to be working for the next four days nonstop till <laughs> from nine in the morning till very late each day. It's going to be it's going to be a busy time. But Essen, Essen always is. This is this is a very busy time of uh, of year. And I'm trying to I'm trying to emulate what life would be like if I was actually there. Um, which is very little sleep and working nonstop. But yeah, that's <laughs> it's going to be fun. And this is kind of the night before Essen. So on the Wednesday of Essen Spiel, I would be in there walking around the exhibit hall, picking up some of the new hotness, and then going back to the hotel. This is the only night of Essen Spiel where I actually get to play a game because the rest of it is all just, you know, work and meetings. So um, yeah, we've managed to create that tonight. We've all disappeared off to the back room of a pub, had our schnitzel and our vice beer, and we've played a game. <laughs> So, brilliant. Great, well, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paul and Russ. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank Pleasure. you, Russ, to, for joining us. And I will speak to you soon. All right, bye. Bye bye. All right, let's do that. So, there we go. We're all done. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and as I mentioned, I will be back from nine o'clock tomorrow morning, I think, maybe 10 o'clock. Um, and I've got, yeah, four days of content coming to the channel over the next four days unboxings, playthroughs. All sorts of random stuff. At one point, I'm just going to put together a box and do a live stream of it because I'm that crazy. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a busy four days. Uh, yeah, tune into the channel if you're interested. Um, and yeah, thank you very much to all of my patron supporters for helping fund the channel. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see you next time. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.